Hi guys, it's been a while uh, since I made any knives, but today I want to show you this knife. This knife is my oyster knife, and it's like the knife I started knife, waking, knife making with. So everything you see from the mill and the belt grinder has all been earned by this little knife. And still, I only have one or two videos about it, so I'm gonna make a batch of them. They're all for uh, customers, and I'm gonna show you how I make them and what makes them so special. Okay, so this is the actual oyster knife. I just got it back from heat treatment. Uh, I sent it back to England. It's RWL 34 steel uh, and it's quite thick still. It's uh, one millimeter at the edge. Uh, normally you would go to the belt grinder and remove more material, uh, but I'm not gonna do that because it's an oyster knife. An oyster knife is not so much of a knife, but it's actually more of a pry bar. You use it to pry open the oysters. Um, so what I'm going to do first is now that I already ground them and they're high, uh, high grit and then what I'm going to do first is sand the flats with the belt grinder, remove all scratches and then polish up and start polishing it. First time making these as a batch, so I'm curious what's going to happen. Okay, the next step is polishing all these blades. And polishing really is my least favorite part of the process. But uh, before you polish it, your knife is ru uh, rude and it's crude and uh, it's not very sophisticated. But once you've got it sanded down and it's polished, it's becoming a knife, it's becoming a project. And when you reach 220 grit, you are on that point that you can see, yes, I'm making something beautiful here. Finally finished all the sanding work, really happy with that. Uh, sanding is really not my forte, but now I have something really special. I have a special request for a flex fiber handle. So this is flex fiber, it's a natural material. Uh, it's made out of some kind of root and they dried it. Uh, and I'm gonna cast it in epoxy with some extra layers. Uh, and it's, it's a really beautiful material, I really like it. So first of all I have some G10 liners uh, for some extra decoration and I'm gonna sandblast them and treat them so that they can glue up properly. screwed one up. You can see the holes not completely straight. Well, I hope you can see it but yeah I could turn over the handle and uh, glue it on the other side but that's not how it's working. I want the knife to be good, I want it to be perfect so uh, I'm gonna scrap these handles and start over and the other, the other ones came out very nicely so I'm happy with that. So we have five oyster knives, all numbered, cleaned, degreased, brushed, sandblasted, finished for extra uh, good gluing surface. We have cleaned and degreased wooden handles along with the pins inside, also numbered. 
we've got the glue I'm using West Systems Epoxy G Flex see it's very good stuff and it moves uh, wet wood we've got gluing clamps acetone paper more gluing clamps more gluing clamps and a dust mask with carbon filters so I've never glued five knives in one time but it'll be okay I guess So there we have it, bit of a mess, but we have five complete glued up oyster knives. This is the point where I'll get my knives before I'll start hand sanding the wood. So it's already fully contoured, I can already feel oysters being opened with this knife. This is the point, so let me show you how I get here. And there you have it, a fully 3D contoured handle. It's tapered, it's narrow, nice place for your thumb. Ready for so soaking in oil. So this is linseed oil. I now use a better linseed oil than I did before. Just one of the quick tips I got. So I got this new workshop and it smells very very nice. But here's the effect of putting a knife in the oil. That's the difference. Makes it absolutely beautiful. So it's going to soak for quite some time. Workshop. Let's finish up these last bit of oyster knives. We're gonna start off with the flex fiber one. Here is the infamous flex fiber. It has red on the bottom and the flex here. So I'm gonna draw two sets, sort them out, glue them up. Look at the depth in all these layers. I'm just starting to sand it. But it's already very nice and very organic, so I can't wait to finish this knife. This is a finished flex fiber oyster knife handle. And now it's very rough, but I need to polish the edges, make sure the thickness is okay, and then I'm gonna oil it. And then it's gonna be, it's gonna be beautiful. It's finished. It's beautiful. I'm biased. I don't like to brag, but I think that this is the prettiest oyster knife in the world. And I'm proud to make it. Let's see some close ups. end result of this batch of oyster knives. I've never made five oyster knives at once before. I never had five oyster knives together one, uh, at once before but I'm really proud of the end result and especially this one here this flex fiber oyster chucker it's just something else. This material it's so glossy and so organic and you can see all kinds of details like this piece of straw it's crossing over and it's golden and I really like it it's a very special piece but I also like this one because uh, it's a sleeker shape than the other ones because it's for a female customer and she asked for her smaller hands some minor adjustments to allow better prying in the oysters I really like making things special especially for the customers when they ask I'm almost ready for shipment. These oyster knives are already in the cases, but I have for this oyster knife 
still need to place the 3D printed inlay part. Which is quite cool because it's both numbered uh, and it's custom made for each knife. Well, you didn't really think that we would end this video without ever opening an oyster, right? So here I have a very fine tripulated oyster. And the oyster knife we made in this video. And of course, one of these special oyster gloves. Let me show you how to use this oyster knife. Maybe the most important thing of opening oysters is trying to keep in control. This oyster knife is designed on that because it has no sharp edges. So you can lay your thumb safely on the blade like this. And this makes sure that you have only a very short tip to prevent uh, sticking out. So now for opening the oyster. Here's the oyster and you'd always want to come in like here. There is this notch and in there you can place the oyster knife safely. It's important to have a good grip on the oyster. So what I'm going to do is lay it on a towel, not to damage the kitchen table top. Put my hand on top of it, press real hard, then insert the knife. So it's now time to really easily jiggle the knife inside. Go a bit from left to right and you slowly see the knife is going in deeper. Now you can see that I'm inside the oyster. I'm inside, slowly go forwards and then you cut off the shell. And there we have it. The oyster is open. What you want to do next is take out everything that does not belong in there. Go underneath the oyster like this, scrape it loose. And turn it around. And there you have it. A fully opened oyster along with a beautiful handmade oyster knife. One completely finished oyster knife, one opened Tripoli oyster, and I want to thank you very much for watching. Uh, and I hope to see you next time, and if you have any interest in one of my oyster knives, please visit my website. Thank you very much.